Howdy folks, hope you're all having a great weekend, and I've got something slightly different for you today. But only slightly. Um, because I have featured a game somewhat similar to this before. And it is about tanks. This is Armoured Battle Crew World War I from Gatai Games. And it's very, very similar in concept to the Bomber Crew game that I featured in Casual Saturday, what must have been a year ago by now. It's basically a World War I tank command and management simulator. You've got a tank, you've got a crew, you have various different components on that tank which have to be managed to keep the tank running, and you've got other things shooting at you, trying to make life as interesting for you as possible in the process. So what's this all about? Is it any good? How does it work? And why should you care? Well, very good questions. Uh, let's see if we can address them. Right now the game's in early access. The release date is coming soon. So not all of the game systems have actually been implemented yet, although most of them have, with the exception of the tech tab up there at the top right corner of the screen, which is where you're going to research various different upgrades for your tank. Right now there are only two tanks available to play, the British Mark V and the British Mark A Whippet. And here in the barracks you can see the crew that's available to man, or in some cases, woman your tank. Theoretically, any crew member can be put into any position on the tank, but some of them are just going to be better at driving than at manning a machine gun, for example. And they also have various different perks, abilities and traits. For example, somebody who has the ability to go into rapid fire mode might be a very, very good crew member to have manning a machine gun, but they may also have the downside that their shots are 20% less accurate. So picking the right crew for the right job is going to be very important, and of course the crew can all be levelled up to further boost their skills. Here in the arsenal we're taking a look at the various different weapons that we can fit to the Mark A Whippet tank, which is almost exclusively limited to machine guns and anti-tank rifles. And you're going to have to think very carefully about the kind of weapons that you do equip the tank with. For example, the Godsoul Experimental Anti-Tank Rifle only fires armour-piercing ammunition, so it's not going to be an awful lot used defending your tank against infantry. For that, you're going to need machine guns. And not all of the machine guns are the same, either. The Lewis gun, for example, is very accurate and has a high rate of fire, but a relatively low ammunition capacity, so if you arm your tank exclusively with Vickers machine guns, your gunners are likely to be spending as much time running backwards and forwards between the ammunition bins as they are shooting at any attacking German troops. You also get to mess around with exactly how much armour plating your tank carries. Heavier armour is obviously good, it's going to give your crew a better chance of actually surviving any upcoming battles, but it's also going to drastically affect the weight of the tank, and these tanks were not very powerful in the first place. And a heavier tank means a slower tank. Not just moving forwards in a straight line, but also slower to turn and get that heavier armour facing towards the direction of any kind of incoming threat. So these are all decisions that you're going to have to weigh carefully before you actually take the tank out onto the battlefield. So I've decided I'm going to go with just reinforced front armour plating on my Mark V here, because I don't want to weigh the thing down so much that it's completely immobile. And now I have to decide what kind of weapons I want to fit to the sponsons of my Mark V. And I've got, well, two main choices here. I can fit machine guns, but there are plenty of other places to fit machine guns. So I'm going to have to choose between either the 6-pounder or the 3-pounder anti-tank gun. And you might think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Well, 6 pounders higher calibre, you go for that. And the 6-pounder is more versatile. As well as anti-tank and high explosive, it can fire shrapnel and canister shot. But it's a short-barreled gun. It's not particularly high velocity. So the anti-tank capabilities of the 3-pounder gun are actually a lot better but the 3-pounder can only fire armour-piercing or high-explosive. So if I'm going to take the 3-pounders with their longer barrels for their higher velocity and more effective anti-tank capabilities, I'm going to have to make up for the lack of anti-personnel capabilities on the 3-pounder guns with the machine guns in the front, sides and rear of the tank. And picking the right machine guns for your tank is another headache entirely. By default I've got the Hotchkiss, but it only has a 30-round clip, although I can carry a lot of ammunition in the machine gun ammunition bins. On the other hand, we go for the Vickers. Very reliable gun, and it comes with an ammunition capacity more than three times that of the Hotchkiss. Unfortunately, it also fires almost twice as fast as the Hotchkiss. 
isn't as accurate as the Hotchkiss, and I can only carry two spare reloads. At some point, of course, you're going to have to just stop messing around with the tank and actually put it into battle and hope that you've made the right choices. And so here we are in our trusty Mark V tank, somewhere on the Western Front. In 15 minutes, our infantry are going to be launching attacks on two enemy control points. How well those attacks go is going to depend entirely upon us. There are all kinds of barbed wire entanglements that have to be crushed so that the infantry can advance. There's all kinds of defences at those two control points which must be eliminated. And while all of that's going on, we're probably going to be running into ambushes from concealed anti-tank guns, enemy tanks, and it's extremely likely that we're also going to be getting constantly shelled by enemy artillery. There is something we can do about that, of course, because the artillery isn't off the map. It's actually located on the map somewhere. In fact, we've received intelligence that the enemy artillery positions are located in the woods, so if I decide to, I can go looking for them and kill them, which will make my life and the life of the attacking infantry a lot easier. However, I don't have an unlimited amount of fuel. And so you have to balance making life easier for yourself and the infantry against actually ensuring that you have enough fuel to complete your main objectives. And I also have a slightly heavier tank than normal because I've reinforced the frontal armour, uh, which may or may not also affect my fuel consumption. I'm not entirely sure, but I imagine it probably would. And oh, we've got some action. Oh crap, it's a tank. <laughs> okay. So I'm switching to the starboard side three pounder anti-tank gun. I've selected armour piercing ammunition. Uh, I've given the gunner instructions to fire and we're engaging what looks like a captured French Renault FT light tank. Come on boys, give him hell. Oh, and he's backed up my infantry as well, so... You can see the fire arcs of the various different weapons that are selected. You need to get the machine guns firing on the infantry and the anti-tank gun firing at, well, you know, the tank. I've only actually got the front machine gun firing at the infantry. Um, yeah, the starboard side machine gun is occluded by the three-pounder anti-tank gun. Although the guy manning the front machine gun seems to be doing all right, and the enemy tank isn't looking very healthy. In fact, it looks like there's only one infantry left, so let's swing it around. Get the other three-pounder working. Give the crew on the port side a chance to get involved. And bingo, we're done. Except not quite, because we're either driving through a minefield, or we're being shot at by artillery. Yeah. Alright, well, things have calmed down at least a little for the moment, so we're going to take this opportunity to get the crew to reload their weapons. And there's some kind of capture circle up ahead. Uh, it looks like a resupply drop, so... Yeah, what the hell. We'll take it. Tank didn't seem to take a lot of damage from that attack, and we still have plenty of fuel. And we're just about done. Oh, 100 command points. Ah, command points. Right, this is... Yeah. Let's talk about command points. So, as well as the various different machine guns and cannons, the driving controls, the engine, the fuel tank, the ammunition and first aid kit lockers, you also have a radio at the rear of the tank. And if you stick an unoccupied crewman onto the radio, you can spend command points to call in various different special abilities. We don't actually need that just yet, so we're going to hold fire on that just for the moment. Right now I'm just using the tank to crush some of these barbed wire obstacles, although I do seem to be taking some indirect fire from somewhere. Now obviously you want to crush as many of these barbed wire obstacles as you possibly can to aid the infantry when they conduct their attacks, but also if you destroy 30 of them I'm going to gain 100 score. And if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see a score bar. Currently it sits at 10 points out of a possible 500. 500 points is what's required for a successful mission. And if I were to drive off into the woods, go looking for enemy artillery and destroy at least one of those, I would also gain another 100 points towards that 500 points score that I need to call this mission a success. Right now, I'm frankly amazed that that bridge took my weight, although I do appear to have at least half destroyed it. <laughs> uh, so it might not hold my weight if I decide to use it to get out of here. Slightly more pressing concern, of course, is the 37mm anti-tank gun that was shooting into the side of my tank as I was crossing the bridge. But I've switched to high explosive ammunition on the 3-pounder gun, and that, in combination with uh, some point-blank range fire from the Vickers machine gunner on the port side of the tank, has taken care of the anti-tank gun's crew. The gun itself is still there, of course, 
and that's why I'm driving over it and making sure that it is not still there because there may be enemy reinforcements who would once again crew the gun and put it to use putting holes in my tank and we can't have that can we? We haven't quite reduced all of the opposition in this particular control point although there's plenty of barbed wire entanglements up there that we can get rid of. We're taking fire from the right hand side and I've switched to high explosive ammunition and the three pounder guns now and that's doing a reasonable job of quelling the opposition um, at least on the right side in combination with the Vickers machine gunner although if I had the six pounder guns the shrapnel or canister ammunition would be doing a much much better job but I don't have the six pounder guns so I'm just gonna have to put up with it port side gun crew oh shit I just took a grenade stop that you all right, this was a bad time to run low on ammunition on the port side. There's a, okay, we managed to get the Vickers gun at least reloaded quickly enough to take care of that guy. Uh, and the three-pounder has been reloaded. The front machine gunner is running low on ammunition, so we'll run him to the ammo bins. Grab a crate of ammo and get that front gun reloaded as well. A couple of minutes later, I've successfully reduced most of the defences at that capture point, and I have found myself what appears to be another enemy tank. Well, we can't have that, can we? So, pedal to the metal driver. Charge! Ow. That looked like it hurt. Driver, I said charge. What do you mean you're going as fast as you can? <laughs> That's uh, simply not good enough, is it? Well, this seems like as good an opportunity as any to show you some of the crew skills that your crew can have that you can take advantage of in battle. Young Albert, my driver, was a bit of a geezer when he was young. He liked to steal cars and drive them as if he'd stolen them. And that experience translates into two crew skills here in Armoured Battle Crew. Floor it and power to the tracks, which in combination means that he can make this Mark V go, well, not very fast. I mean, it's still a Mark V heavy tank, but faster than normal and also have a much, much tighter turning circle. Which means that, yes, believe it or not, I am actually circle strafing what appears to be a Renault FT in a British Mark V heavy tank. Yes, that's right, history fans. Not a lot of people realise that the modern first-person shooter circle strafe tactic was actually pioneered by British Mark V heavy tank crews in World War I. You see, it's not just a game. <laughs> You're learning things as well. Anyway... Several minutes later, we're reducing the defences at the second capture point because that infantry attack is due very, very soon. And here we can see an example of my actually taking direct control over the guns. I've given Desmond a couple of minutes off while I've taken over control of the port side, or right turret, three-pounder gun. And I'm giving that 37mm anti-tank gun what for. I'm not entirely sure whether I should be using high explosive or on piercing. But, yeah, what the hell. Just fire enough shots at it. <laughs> Job done. Unfortunately, I'm starting to run very low on three pounder ammunition. If you have a look at the various different boxes located at the rear of the tank, one of them has an orange ammunition indicator, which means that it may only have one or two reloads left in it for the three pounder guns. That's not good. Equally not good, if you have a look up at the top right corner of the screen, you can see that while my tank still has plenty of health remaining, the armor's holding up fine. I don't have an awful lot of fuel. And I'm ashamed to admit, although almost none of you will be surprised to learn, that at the time I was recording this, I was blissfully ignorant as to my actual fuel status. I just kind of assumed that the tank would keep going forever. Guess what? If you run out of fuel, it doesn't. And so, to the surprise of pretty much nobody, a couple of minutes later, that's exactly what happened. My tank just kind of stopped. Now I can still find weapons, but this is not a great situation in which to find yourself. The infantry attacks are on the way, so hopefully I've done enough to reduce the defences at the two control points, although there does still seem to be some fairly stiff opposition at this one. More worryingly, I am completely out of reloads for the three-pounder guns, and I'm starting to run low on ammunition for the machine guns as well. This, boys and girls, is what the radio's for. Albert, the driver, isn't doing a huge amount while the tank is out of fuel, so I'm going to send him back to the radio. And, oh, what's this? 
Artillery? Yeah, we'll have some of that. Let's uh, call some artillery in there. We've got plenty of command points. Let's have some shrapnel artillery on the enemy infantry over there. Oh, we're getting shot at by an enemy tank. Now, luckily, that guy is at least within the firing arcs of one of the six-pounder guns that does still have some ammunition. The infantry have just arrived, but I'm going to need to take care of that enemy tank. Not too concerned about that enemy tank because I do have my reinforced frontal armor pointing towards him. And young Desmond, on the three-pounder gun on the engaged side, did still have armor-piercing ammunition, although he is running very low. Francis, on the port side three-pounder, is completely out of ammunition and I have no reloads for the three-pounder guns. The tank's taken a bit of a battering, so we're going to get some repairs underway. The crew were a bit shook up, so we're probably going to grab the first aid kits and fix up their minor cuts and bruises, but I've only now just realised exactly why it is that the tank won't move. I'm completely out of fuel. We've taken one of the capture points, but I can't get anywhere near the second capture point unless I get some fuel into the tank. Albert, old boy, be a good chap since you can't actually drive the tank at the moment. Hop onto that radio, spend some of those command points we've been accumulating, and call in one of those small supply drops. And there it is. Well, fantastic. It's not a lot of fuel, but it's all we've got. And we've also managed to at least partially refill the ammunition lockers, which means more ammunition for the three pounders. Right then, chaps, we have another capture point to, well, you know, capture. We don't have an awful lot of fuel. So there's not going to be an awful lot of time here for sightseeing. Let's just get the guns reloaded straight to the second capture point and see if we can't all be in Berlin in time for Christmas. Tally-ho chaps, for you Fritz, the war is over and all kinds of good stuff like that. Speaking of good stuff, Gatai Games have been in touch with me and a couple of you lucky salt miners, if you like the look of Armoured Battlecrew World War I, can get yourself free access to the alpha test. All you have to do, and the full details are down below in the video description, complete with links, is join their Discord, enter a certain command to gain access to top secret armored battle crew channels, enter a giveaway, which is going to be happening today and tomorrow, and then wait patiently, keep your fingers crossed, and pray to our end Jesus. And a certain select few lucky salt miners will get access to the armored battle crew World War I alpha test. If you're not lucky enough to get free access and you do like what you see, I'm sure Gatai Games wouldn't object if you were to help them continue to fund development of the game. If you're not lucky enough to get free access to the game and you do like what you see, you can always head over to Steam and add the game to your wish list, where you'll be kept apprised of further details as the game continues through its development cycle. Again, link down below in the video description. And just as a little sweetener, I've also been reliably informed by a mole at Gatai Games' top secret World War I Headquarters Command Bunker that they have plans to put me in the game as a playable crew member. Why would they put somebody from the Navy in a tank? Shut up, don't ask questions. <laughs> Although actually it makes a lot more sense than you might first imagine, because believe it or not, the early tank crews were actually trained at the Royal Naval School of Gunnery at Horsey Island in Portsmouth, so I think that's entirely appropriate. Anyway, that's Armoured Battle Crew World War I from Gatai Games. I hope you all enjoyed the video, I hope you're all having a great weekend, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.